research your topic. Tonight we have planned to elect our officers that would lead us through the next Toastmaster year from July 1st to June 30th, 2020. In spite of the fact that that election is yet to take place, tonight John will examine leadership, what it is and how it affects our club in the large measure, determine in a large measure how it determines how successful we will become. I'm sorry, I chopped that up a little bit. This speech demonstrates the importance of strong, courageous leadership. The title of John's speech is Courage, Vision, and Determination. Please help me welcome with great exuberance and enthusiasm, distinguished Toastmaster, John Morris. It was about one year ago when we elected Brenda Adams to serve as president of Carrollwood Toastmasters. During the past year, we've had a really, really rewarding year in every way that you can measure it. Membership, education, we've had a, a wonderful time here under the leadership of Brenda Adams. And not only that, but Brenda led us by being a participant in the International Speech Contest. You know, in that speech, she revealed part of herself that none of us knew before. It took courage to do that. And I commend her for the year that we've had because she helped us be what we are. Tonight, I'm going to present another leader with the help of Mr. Jim Sims. If you would come up, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Sir Winston Churchill. Mr. Churchill, you were born in 1874. Your father Randolph was a nobleman. Your mother Jenny was an American citizen. You had one brother by the name of Jack, I believe. You were at the age of 18, you were in military school. Your parents really didn't play any role in bringing you up. They pretty much left that to nannies and to the school officials. They were absentee parents in every respect. Your dad wrote you a letter at the age of 18, and it said this, I am certain that if you cannot prevent yourself from leading the idle and useless, unprofitable life that you have had during your school days and later months, you will become a mere social wastrel, one of hundreds of the public school failures. You will degenerate into a shabby, unhappy, futile existence. If that is so, you will have to bear all the blame for your misfortunes on yourself. Your affectionate father, Randolph. <laughs> Winston Churchill, among other things, had an absolutely photographic memory. He remembered that letter verbatim throughout his life. In a speech to Parliament, he recited the letter word for word 50 years later. He was a literary genius and a wordsmith of the first order. During the Boer War, he entered the Boer War not only as a combatant, but also as a writer. And he was captured. He was captured, he was a prisoner of war, and then he escaped. How did you escape? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. 
At the age of 24, he published his first book. At the age of 25, he published his first novel, Savnolia. Savnolia stank. No one read it. They couldn't sell it. He said he spent a great deal of time the rest of his life telling his friends and colleagues not to buy the book. It was that bad. But he wasn't deterred. As a matter of fact, he went on to become a member of the British Parliament at the age of 26. He served in Parliament for 60 years. He served as Prime Minister on two occasions. He served as a combatant, as a leader in World War I. Yes, he, very good, that's what you did. You were the Chancellor of the Admiralty, you remember those years, I'm sure. You, that means that he, he led the Navy, he was like the Secretary of the Navy. He was also the Secretary of the Exchequer at another time, and he was responsible for sounding the alarm over Nazi Germany. He said it loud and clear, don't forget the threat of the German and Italian forces. Well, we all know that that's exactly what happened. We entered World War II, and he, during World War II, was elected the Prime Minister. In 1940, he was elected Prime Minister. That was about 40 years after he said he was going to become Prime Minister. He was elected Prime Minister and served for that next five years. He said in his first speech to Parliament, I offer only blood, toil, tears, and sweat. In a speech that he gave to Oxford University, Mr. Churchill has already brought that out. As the end of his commencement speech, he said, the only thing I have to say to you is summed up in three words, never give up. Never, never give up. Never give up. That's it. That was Churchill. He went on, of course, World War II was over in the spring of 1945. Three months after the war ended, his party lost the election and he was no longer prime minister. That didn't stop him. He talked often about the threat of the Soviet Union. He talked often about how we should maintain our alliances in Europe and help Europe to rebuild. And he was in 1945, uh, he, he was really the most, foremost leader of the free world. It's not only in that area that he excelled, he was a literary genius. He wrote and he wrote and he wrote. How did you write anyway? Yeah, there it is. He wrote it all hand -wrought. Go ahead and start writing. There's Churchill writing by hand. 77 volumes he wrote, 43 different titles. In 1953, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. In 1963, he was made an honorary citizen of the United States. What a leader. When we talk about him, we can't forget the three words, courage, vision, and determination. We're going to elect officers and Tampa Toastmasters. We're not expecting blood, toil, sweat, and tears here. You may have some, though. <laughs> you may have some. We're expecting you to show that sort of courage and that sort of vision and that sort of determination, because if you do, Tampa Carolwood Toastmasters will have an extraordinary oh, year. Boy, no. Oh, what a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Toastmaster. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't award you the Nobel Prize when you get those on you. Yeah, you gotta take off the hat. <laughs> there! <laughs>